Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today we're gonna make caramel corn in the Ninja Foodie. I'm using the six and a half quart, but you could use the eight quart or even the compact size. I think it's a five quart. Any size is gonna be just fine for the volume of popcorn that we are doing here today. So we're gonna make a total of eight cups of popcorn, and for that you need about a half of a cup of unpopped kernels. First thing you wanna do is turn the Ninja Foodie on, hit the sear saute button, and get the oil heated up. I have one tablespoon of canola oil. You could use whatever oil you want. Uh, coconut works. I probably would not use olive oil, but that's just my preference. But any oil is just fine. You can probably even do it without oil. I make popcorn for my chickens and I don't use any oil and it works just fine. But for this recipe, I decided to go with the oil. And then I put in about two kernels there of the unpopped corn and just make sure that they get into the actual oil. There we go and I put the lid on. Now, you could use several different kinds of lids. The one that I like the most is this silicone lid, and I'll explain why. I like it because you can get underneath here, like that, and stir it around without having popcorn shooting out. Um, but if you don't have one of these, it's fine. You can use a glass lid that fits. That's fine. You just have to be a little bit more careful when you open up to stir, or you can even use the pressure lid. But that gets a little bit cumbersome, a little, you know, because you gotta unscrew it and everything, but it can be done. But for me, I have this and I'm gonna use it. It works perfectly. So now I just let it heat up on high sear saute until we hear at least one of those kernels pop. This step is not absolutely necessary. You can just pour in all of the kernels right now and just wait for them to pop. However, what I have found is that this greatly reduces the amount of scorching and also, for, in my opinion, has helped with more popped kernels. So that's why I do it this way, but you can certainly skip this step if you want to and just throw it in there. So now we just wait until it pops. Now, if you wanted to make flavored popcorn and you didn't want to go the step that I'm going to do to make caramel popcorn, you would add in your flavorings when you add in the rest of the kernels. So let's say you wanted to add in salt or there's some delicious popcorn flavorings out there. You could add those in when you add in the rest of the uh, kernels and just stir it around, okay? I'm starting to smell it, so I think it's gonna pop any time. It's been about, I would say, at least three to four minutes. So this part takes a little bit of time. But once you start to smell it, then it's gonna pop. We'll put this in and it will go really fast from there. I wish the sear saute had a countdown. That would be really handy. Uh, it would help me so much. There it goes. All right, so we just popped. Okay, go ahead. And I did that kind of fast. I acted like I was just scared. I wasn't really scared, but I was thinking that other kernel might pop. All right, so give it a nice stir and then close your lid. So now the trick is to get all the kernels popped or as many as you can without burning it. And what I found is that once you get a really rapid popping, turn your heat down to medium low or low medium, it'll say actually, turn it down and then let it finish up. And it works perfectly every single time. We're gonna start to hear it really pop and it'll go pretty fast. Now the one thing with caramel corn, or if you're gonna make popcorn balls or something like that, is you do not want unpopped kernels. So to help with that, I usually scoop out with a cup, you know, it could be any measuring cup, and I just scoop out some from the top until I get down closer to the bottom and then I can assess how many unpopped kernels there are and try to work around those. Because you don't wanna bite into an unpopped kernel when you're making caramel corn. All right, when it really starts to get popping fast, I try to sneak this underneath without letting any of those popcorn kernels and just stir a little bit around there. Oops, one did pop out. All right, there we go. 
And then we're gonna let it pop at that high speed for about another minute. And then I'm gonna take the temperature down to low medium. And that's just to help prevent it from scorching. But if you take your temperature down too soon, then you won't get all the kernels popped. So it's kind of a little bit of a timing issue and I just kind of go by ear. See how it picks up a little bit? When I start to hear it really pick up is when I take the temperature down. And I think I'm gonna do it. Right about now. And I go to low medium. Or medium low, or yes, yeah, it's low medium. And then give another little stir. That's some real rapid popping, so I could have even left it on high just maybe another 30 seconds longer. But I think it'll be fine. I've done up to one full cup of popcorn in the Ninja Foodi without any problems. So right now, you know, we're using half of a cup of the unpopped kernels, but I've done up to one full cup. It's full too. It's so full that this uh, red covering starts to lift up a little bit. All right, let's sneak in here. We're slowing down some. Wow. Give it a little stir. When it really starts to slow down and there's about, you know, five to seven seconds between the pops, I usually go ahead and just turn it off. And I let it be for a few minutes. By stirring it, you're just preventing it, the bottom kernels from scorching on the bottom. Uh, but now that the heat's off, you really don't have to do anything. You can just let it be for a few minutes, not even that, maybe a minute, 90 seconds, until no more kernels are popping, and then you're good to go. And then I'm gonna use a measuring cup. This is just a one cup measure. And I'm gonna start to scoop out the kernels. And then we make the caramel, and it comes together so easily and so quickly. You don't have to wash the pot in between. You're just gonna wipe it out with a paper towel. You don't want it wet. So if you do end up washing your pot, make sure you dry it thoroughly before you start to make the caramel. Oh, it looks so good. All right, I think everything's popped that's going to pop so we can take this off. And we will start to measure out our popcorn. So that is a good heaping cup. Two cups. Three cups. Four cups. It looks like we are good to go here. So see how I'm going around and just trying to get out all of the popped kernels with few, if any, of the unpopped. If I see any, I'm gonna grab them before they migrate all the way down to the bowl like this one just did. That one migrated. I'm gonna have to get a spoon and get that one out. The other thing you can do, which I have done, is you can use something like this and lay your popcorn out on it, and the little kernels, if they haven't popped, they will drop through these little squares. So that's a, that's a little tip, but I don't usually have to do it for this recipe. I did it for popcorn balls when I made those. Which is a slightly different recipe, believe it or not, because you need to, um, you don't cook the, the sugar or the caramel as long because you need to have time to form them into balls. So they're a little stickier of a recipe, so it is a, it is a totally different recipe. So don't try to make caramel balls out of this recipe. You wouldn't have very good luck. Okay. 
All right, so we've got our popcorn out and you can see there are very few unpopped kernels. I mean, really, there might be five and they're actually half popped. So, I mean, there's some that are like little small pop pieces of the popcorn. I'm not even gonna worry about that. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and dump this out and then I will wipe it out with the paper towel and then we will start to make our caramel. All right, let's make some caramel. So I'm gonna do my best to show you how to judge the temperature or the candy stage of your caramel as we go along using this bowl of water in case you do not have a thermometer. But I do have a thermometer and if you do have either a candy making one or even an instant read one, I do recommend using it. It's just gonna make it easier for you. But if you don't, you can still do it because I, I'm gonna do my best to show you all the stages. And the reason why I might not be able to catch all the stages is because it moves so fast. So I'm gonna do my best though. And you just need a bowl of regular tap water. All right, so let's get our ingredients in. What I have here is one half of a cup of salted butter. And you do want to use salted butter for this, if at all possible. And the reason is that I, I have read, I always use salted butter, so I've never tried it without, but I've read that if you don't use salted butter, it just becomes a little more temperamental for you. So if you're new to candy making, I would definitely use salted butter. And then we're gonna use a half of a cup of caro syrup, corn syrup, any kind of corn syrup. I say caro because I think that's the brand name, but just any corn syrup is fine. And that also, does some things to make this an easy recipe. But I know a lot of people do not like to use corn syrup. Well, it is possible to make caramel with just sugar. I've done that in a recipe for my turtle cheesecake. So I will link to that there if you wanted to make the caramel just with sugar in the bottom of the pot. You can do that. It takes a little bit more time and is a little more temperamental and you do want to cook it just until it's about 300 degrees, but you can definitely do it. All right, and one cup of brown sugar. Also what I find is like adding in the brown sugar and the butter really adds a depth of flavor to this caramel popcorn. And it is like better than Cracker Jacks and kind of like a cross between like a Crunch and Munch and a Cracker Jack. Oh my goodness, so delicious. All right, turn the Ninja Foodie on. Sear saute is what we want. High is fine. And we're gonna go ahead and get this heated up. And you are gonna be amazed at how easy it is. Now, I do have a couple of ingredients that we haven't added in yet. That is one tablespoon of vanilla extract. And actually, I have a half of a tablespoon of vanilla extract and a half of a tablespoon of butter flavoring because guess what I ran out of today? Vanilla extract. So, improvise, you know, you can omit it. It's not a deal breaker, okay? If you don't have vanilla extract, just omit it or you can use butter flavoring if you have that. It's actually an extract that you get at the grocery store, but they call it butter flavoring. And then I have a half of a teaspoon of baking soda, not powder, but baking soda. And that is important in this recipe. All right, now I like to switch over to, well, you could use anything. As long as it's heat resistant, you can use any type of uh, spoon you want. In fact, I'll hold on to this. I'll use that when we mix in the popcorn. For now, I will use my heat resistant silicone spatula and just give this a stir so it starts to heat up a little bit more. So when we're making candy, there are seven stages. The first stage is called the thread stage. Now I don't have all the temperatures uh, memorized, so I'm not gonna go over that. They will be in the written post on my website, so you can certainly take a look or you can look them up Google. Uh, they're all over the place. Although they do vary, the temperatures vary. I found that interesting. Um, but the basic seven stages are the same. The first one is thread stage. And what that means is that when you put in a little bit of your candy mixture into the water, it will form threads. They're just soft threads. We're not even there yet, but uh, first thing you need to do is bring it to a boil. And once you bring it to a boil, you do not stir. All right, so we're starting to see a few little bubbles here, and I do stir during this period, but once it comes to a really rolling boil, I will no longer stir. So just one little stir, just to make sure everything is melted and incorporated, all the brown sugar is melted, 
And then let's see what our temperature is right now. I don't even think we're, we're not even close to any of the temperatures we need to get to though. Let's see. So we're about 205 to 210. So now just leave it alone. You can also tell a lot of times by the size of the bubbles. These are fairly large bubbles and they will go all across the entire surface area. And then as the water's evaporated, because that's basically what we're doing now, we're cooking out the water. And as that happens, these bubbles actually get a little smaller. So these are like nice big bubbles right now. All right, let's see if we have you could do it, I guess, a couple different ways. Just go in here like that. Well, I might have missed the thread stage, and that's okay. This looks like it's more like softball, which means when it drops in, it forms a little ball, but they're easily smushed. It's not gonna hold its shape, okay? And the thread stages, they'll just turn into like little threads in there. All right, let's see where we are here. All right. All right, that looks like we are at hardball which means that it stays as a ball, doesn't fall apart, but you can smush it, okay? So that's hard ball. Now we'll go to soft crack, which again, I'm not sure if I'll catch all of these. I'm gonna try though. All right, we should definitely be to soft crack now. Yep, and I can tell by the way it formed this little sphere kind of thing. Actually, we're almost to hard crack. All right, so when we get this up to 300 degrees, which should be pretty darn soon if we're at hard crack, it should be 300 degrees. Yeah, I can smell it right now, so I'm gonna turn this off. I can smell it even before the thermometer got up. I could just smell it start to change in the, the way it smells. You don't want to overcook it. You don't want to burn it. All right, the next thing we're going to add in is our vanilla extract. Give that a little stir. See how it bubbles up? You don't want to add the vanilla extract in before you do this or you will end up burning off the flavoring. Then we're going to add in our half of a teaspoon of baking soda. You're going to see it really start to bubble up and just stir it around. What that's doing is incorporating a ton of tiny little air bubbles in here. And then immediately, and I'm gonna switch over to my wooden spoon right now because it's a little bit easier. You do need to work pretty quickly with this, but it's not as stressful as it has been for me in the past because the Ninja Fruity just makes it so easy. Then dump in your popcorn and go ahead and take your wooden spoon and start moving it in. Now, if you want this to really be like Cracker Jacks, add in some red skin Spanish peanuts. I'm gonna add in about a half of a cup and get it mixed up. So keep mixing until all the popcorn is really coated here. All right, that looks really, really good. Now make sure that you are wearing some kind of heat protection on your hands. And then what you wanna do is, let me move some of this out of the way, is go ahead and have a cooling rack ready and put about half of the mixture down. And spread it out into the size clusters that you want. So if you want bigger clusters, leave it together. If you want them all separate, just make sure you just go through and spread it out. Now, when this cools, because we went to hard crack stage, 
when this cools, we will be able to separate them even more. So you don't have to be like exact. You don't have to spend 10 minutes doing this. I just sort of spread it out. I'll try not to knock it off. All right, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna get on the other layer here. All right, so really, seriously, it's been like five minutes, if that, and it's ready to go. So you can, you can hear it. You know, it's, it's totally hardened, cold. This one has some nice popcorn and some coated peanuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this piece here. Mm. That's good. I still prefer cashews though, but the peanuts taste just like the kind that you get in the Cracker Jack box. So mission accomplished there. This would be Jeff's favorite, minor cashews. Either way, with nuts, without nuts, any kind of nuts, you can, anything you like you can put in here. Now to store it, because it is not sticky, like I wanna really let you know it is not sticky at all. So you don't have to worry about it sticking together. Unless it got really humid. I mean, obviously, sugar does not like humidity. It will start to soften. So don't store it in the refrigerator. Store it out on the counter in a Ziploc bag or any kind of a container that will keep air out of it so it also stays fresh. And there you go. Does this make great little gifts? Um, it tastes amazing, really really amazing. So I hope you enjoy it. Make some caramel popcorn for your family today. All right. So easy peasy. Now, if you're worried about it making a mess in the pot, it absolutely does not. This will wipe out and clean up easy breezy. No problems there. So enjoy your caramel popcorn. <laughs>